All right, let's keep rolling. Next up, we move into the Kent- Kentucky Wildcats, one and two, one and two in the SEC at the number 18th ranked Tennessee Volunteers, two and one, two and one in the SEC. Kentucky opened the year with a 29-13 loss at Auburn, then lost a heartbreaker, 42-41 in overtime at home to Ole Miss. They followed that up with a dominating defensive performance this past weekend, 24-22 win over Mississippi State. They're averaging just 154.3 yards per game through the air. Tennessee opens the season with a 31-27 win at South Carolina, 35-12 home win at Missouri before succumbing 44-21 at number three ranked Georgia, who is being uh, beating up on their opponents with a big, big game coming up. This weekend, Kentucky Wildcats, Tennessee Volunteers. Let's go to Noli Knows. But first, let me give some odds here. Right now, the best line you could get on Kentucky is six and a half plus six and a half at DraftKings and Bet Rivers. The other books are at six. FanDuel has moved to five and a half. And this opened at Bet365 at five. It's moved to six at Tennessee. So, uh, money coming in on the Volunteers. Noli knows. Take it away. Yeah, Jimmy, when I look at this game, and it's another game that you see with uh, just the previous game that we just mentioned, and my play's on the total here. You see the, the total's dropping already, and I think there's a big reason. The big reason for that is the style of play that the, both of these teams deploy. You see that they were able to uh, – the, the total goes clearly over last week against Georgia, but you see Tennessee was completely shut out in the second half by a much better Georgia team. This to me Georgia's number one number one team defensively and they showed it with those some of those turnovers turnovers, excuse me, that they were able to create. And Kentucky, this is a team this is a team that likes to run the ball a lot. You see them last year in this matchup ran the ball 64 times for 302 yards. You know, that's something that they they're not going to shy away from. They're not able to get many yards through the air. And that's that's some of the strategy that they deployed. This is a very physical game. You look at both of the games for the last two seasons, 31 and 30, respectfully, in the total, with total set at 42 and 43. Uh, this one opened up at 49 and a half, and I thought that was a gift. I jumped on it, and it's already going down. Uh, this is a game I really like. You got both teams that play at a, at a slower place than average. Uh, slightly slower than average than the than the uh, for college football at seventy plays per game, and this is a play I really like here. I'm going with the under. Noli knows on the under. You got that at forty nine and a half. Yeah, great. It's job. already down. Yeah, it's way down. Great, great job. Forty nine and a half for Noli. This total opened up bet three sixty five at forty nine. It's now down to forty seven and a half. Let's uh, go up to C Mac. What do you think of Noli's under here, Kentucky Tennessee? Yeah, I like it. I think it'll be a, like you said, the pace these both these teams play. I think it'll be a smash mouth game. It's dropping. I still like it, the under. I don't know if I want to play this one, and I don't like the spread either. It's six. I haven't seen enough in Tennessee. Um, they covered barely against South Carolina. I think they're good, but as you saw last week, step up to Georgia. They're not ready. You know, Pruitt in his third year has done well, but – I like Noli's read on the under, but I got a pass here on the game. All right, we have a pass from C Mac. Let's see what John Ryan has to say. Kentucky, Tennessee. Well, here I'm going to talk about yards per point um, in the SEC. Uh, what we'll find out here in the next couple of minutes is that Tennessee's the better team on on both sides of the ball based on their performances this year. So, on the offensive side, the best offense. In the SEC right now is is Florida with a yards per point of 10.97. Alabama's right behind at 10.99, basically the same. So what that means for those that never heard this metric before is it requires 10.97 yards for Florida to put an average of one point on the scoreboard. So now we let's move down to uh, the other team's in the SEC here, and Kentucky has a 14.1 yards per point measure for offense. So that's not horribly bad. It's actually slightly above average, and it's above average nationally. Uh, Tennessee is the third best offense in the SEC, and they actually become very solid at that number three position when I adjust for strength of schedule of the opponents they've played. So Tennessee has an 11.84 yards per point measure f- for the season. And uh, 
as we all were talking here with the uh, Georgia game, you know, they were winning 21 to 17. And as Connor said, they're just not ready to take that next step. Um, these teams, both these teams have been Cinderella's and I hate the word wannabes, but they're always the ones that are talked about that, oh, this will be the year they have a chance to knock off Auburn or Georgia or Alabama. And you know, the fan bases of those schools are incredible and the games are fantastic, but it always seems that they fall short. In that Georgia game, it seemed like Tennessee just got into the locker room and they're looking at each other, you know, deer in the headlights, like, can, can you believe we're winning? Oh, my God. And then they came out and didn't score. And Georgia just took control and, and uh, manhandled them. This is a matchup of similar type teams. Uh, but as I said, on offense here, Tennessee is much, much better than Kentucky's offense. Now, on the defensive side, coming into the preseason, we all expected Kentucky to have a much better defense than they've had in many, many seasons. And, and so far, they have. But again, Tennessee actually has a yards per point a loud measure of 14.86. So now we're reversing our thinking. A defense wants to force an opponent to gain as many yards as possible to put an average of one point on the board. So what this measure also does is you have a turnover at the 50-yard line giving an opponent a short field. So when you look at total yards, that could be misleading if there was two turnovers deep in uh, a team's territory. So the length of drives are important too. And this is one way to equate everything on an even plane. Uh, so uh, can, Tennessee has a 14.86 ratio and Kentucky is 14.15. So again, very to be close, but the difference between offenses is so great that undoubtedly I will have a uh, probably about a seven star play on Tennessee this Saturday. All right. We finally uh, get to a seven-star play there. Maybe 10-star plays coming. You just have to wait and see a seven-star play possibly on Tennessee. John, do you feel like you need to get on, in on this number soon because it seems like money's coming in on Tennessee? Uh, over the years, I've been, you know, 26 years, Jimmy. I, I sometimes have games where I'll, I'll definitely suggest that. Uh, but it's much like, you know, trading, um, you know, crude oil. You know, the prices are, are erratic. Obviously, betting lines don't move as much. But sometimes it looks like the flows are coming in and you really don't know what's around the corner. And I'm not suggesting that it's a bad idea to go and book it now, because if you're right, then it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, but in, I would scale in the bet. So in other words, if you're betting, um, I'm just throwing this out as an example, 500 a game, then maybe you do 250 now and wait till tomorrow or the next line movements and see how the flows are going. And if they're going in your favor, then you know, add another 100. And then by game time, you have the whole thing in there. Uh, the other idea while we're talking about this, and you and I have talked about it before, is live betting. So rarely do we ever have the luxury of a game and we bet it, and we are you know, the kings of the land, and, it, and it's winning force against the spread right from the opening kickoff. A lot of times, even my 10 stars, you'll get down in the game early on. That's where this live betting, I think, is a tremendous opportunity because in this example, let's say uh, the game starts and Tennessee uh, turns the ball over and Kentucky scores at 7 nothing. Then all of a sudden, uh, three and out, Kentucky gets a field goal, 10 nothing. Now you have a chance to bet Tennessee live, probably as a plus three dog at that point is, is my best estimate. So why not bet half your bet at, at the current line right now and then save some for the game? You know, I found it to be actually a lot of fun to be able to do that. It's it's truly like trading the market for me. Um, so I think that's a, a strategy that I'm working on to really uh, finalize the details of actually when to do it based on you know, machine learning tools. But when you get a favorite that's down 10 in the first quarter it, it and you liked them before the game, then why wouldn't you like them now? Yeah. So no, I think I, that's a good plan. That's a it's a great way of doing it. So Noli on the under, he grabbed it at 49 and a half. John Ryan, very interested in Tennessee and C Mac. Anything for you here? No. I already said. Yeah. I'm off. 
Just thought maybe after hearing a little bit of insight from John Ryan, you might push. Nope. Your, yeah. Nope. No, right. no, no. Okay.